going to talk today about how the banks may actually have set a good example. Yes, that is what I said. I'm Georgia Rowland of the Financial Gym, the only place where someone else does the working out for you. Now, I'm going to put something on a peg first. Remember, though criticised for reckless lending, remember who took the money. When times are good, just like in business and in our private world, shortfalls in one area can often be compensated for in another. However, when we are faced with danger or true crisis, the tendency is to do exactly what the banks did, retreat and withdraw from normal day-to-day -day practice. Let me paint you a picture or scenario. Imagine you're a tour guide who used to take city people through the jungle to see the sights on a regular basis. Now, in hindsight, you may consider this to be a little bit crazy, bearing in mind the danger that lurks in the jungle and the lack of experience of the people who you're guiding. Yet you keep doing this because these crazy, naive people keep trusting you to take them on these tours. Then one day, while you're out with a group, a large wildcat pounces from nowhere and you're all sent running for cover. You escape and you find a cave to hide out in, but your tourists are left out in the danger zone. You know, the only thing standing between them and getting eaten alive is you, as you know the way out of there. But you decide to stay put. What good would it do if you all got caught and if you did manage to survive, you could then help out the tourists? Only by the time you do emerge from the cave, some have been eaten alive. Others have been injured and those that did manage to get out are so traumatised and mistrusting of you that they won't believe anything you say again because you let them down when they needed you the most. I know this is a silly example, but it's not dissimilar to how we, the public, perceives what happens between the banks and small businesses, you know, after the crisis of 2007-8 onwards. After years of happily taking people through the jungle, when danger hit, the banks retreated and the businesses had no contingency and they were faced with extinction. In their case, the wildcat was lack of money, no longer being able to rely on the banks to extend or even give them loans or overdrafts. So, if the banks were such turncoats as is popular belief, why should you follow any example they set? Well, why? Because they taught us one valuable lesson. When your ability to make money is under threat, whether from, in our case, lack of sales, inability to work, for example, if you're self-employed and you get ill, there's a problem. Economic forces like the credit crunch hitting your business from outside a downturn in your actual products and service. Think Sony Walkman. What do you do? Well, apart from sorting out the underlying situation, I would hope, you beef up and or protect your assets. What do I mean by that? Well, for most of you, it's the items that make up your balance sheet. And please don't get too hung up on what a balance sheet is for now. I know it's just another thing that's a pain for you to get your head around. I promise I will demystify that subject in another video, so don't worry. For now, I just want you to understand that one of the things that a balance sheet shows is what your business actually owns, that it may or may not have money worth if you try to sell them. The balance sheet also shows you what cash you have left over at any point in time. So if your money, you know, is under pressure, you need those reserves to fall back on to ride out a storm. As with small businesses, you know, you may not own lots of property, valuable plant and machinery, run a vintage wine cellar, etc. So balance sheet reserves to you may mainly be made up of the cash you got in your bank and in your petty cash tin. And if you're lucky, your two-year-old photocopier come printer. If you rely on borrowing, whether it's an overdraft, loan, credit card, then having cash sitting in a bank or to one side may seem like a distant dream, but it is what's needed. And this finally is what the banks, though unintentionally, did show us. By tightening their lending, they sat on the money. Security became the focus. Savvy business owners, of course, keep generating income, you need to, but keeping something back for contingency and investment cannot be overestimated. The older generation would call it putting something aside for a rainy day. The trick is to be able to do it even when we need the money for other things. The majority of us spend what we earn first and see if there's anything left at the end. But the odds are very strong that there will always be something that you need to pay for even when you're doing really well. So getting into the habit of moving money out of the way before you spend will be one of the things that will really set up your financial foundations. In future months, I will give you some pointers, tools and techniques that you can use to do this for yourself. And if you sign up for my freebies at www.financialgymforbusiness.com, you'll be one of the first to be notified as they become available. In the meantime, 
Thank you again for spending time at the Financial Gym, dedicated to helping you be the financial leader in your business without having to be a financial expert. Please do return, comment, share this with your friends, contacts and customers. And this is Georgette Rowland saying, have a sensational day and I look forward to seeing you again.